All Ireland hurling final day is a big day in Irish life any time. In 1984, it's something very special. It is centenary year, and this is centenary hurling final day. And referee just checking that it is time, and the game is on. And Corker first to break away, but the breakaway broken up. Joachim Kelly way in towards the goal mount. And Cordick Darden, Gordon right in with the ball, but out comes Jer Cunningham with a good clearance. And oh, under pressure, he sends a lovely shot in. Cordick Horan, and it's over the bar. It could have been a goal, but it's over the bar for the point. Kevin Hennessy across from the far side of the field. Little Jerry's after him, but Hennessy is still going. He's bottled up there. He gets the ball back some way to Tony Sullivan, and Tony has sent it over the bar. His second point of the game. Pat Fleury, Jimmy Barry Murphy for Cork, Eugene Putnam knocking the ball off his stick. Eugene beaten now by Tony O'Sullivan. Lovely ball by Tony. High and over the bar. What a lovely one from a very awkward angle. Cork again. From Oswald Cahey, Pat Fleury. And there's a nice pass in now. Jimmy Barry Murphy to shot in it. It's a goal! And Jimmy Barry Murphy to shot in Erie. This is Jimmy Barry Murphy with the ball. Hand passes it over to the side. And a lovely piece of control of the ball there. And so after the first half, the score is... Cork, one goal and five points, awfully seven points. With Tomas Mulcahy right half forward of the second half is on. Joachim Kelly. Pat Carroll, who's gone centre field for Offley. Not an awful lot of length in that one. And a very, very short clearance with Shawnee Leary with the ball now. Shawnee a shot and Shawnee a point. Goal and a point he scored. Eugene Coughlin going out to cover it off. Ball blocked down by Tony O'Sullivan. This is Pat Fleury and this is Kevin Hennessy. Hennessy going right through. Back out now to Jimmy Barry Murphy. Jimmy along the ground. Goal! Kevin Hennessy scored it. The referee was doing a signal to put it up. Two goals at 11 points. Shot and it is another. No, it's not. It is. It is. It's a goal by Shawnee Leary. King goal himself. Pat Carroll. Tom Connolly. Tom Connolly going up with it now. Back to Pat Carroll. Pat over the bar. Another point, but not one that's going to make any great difference. The Corkmen lining in front of the goal in two lines. Here we go. Low. And it's a goal. It's a goal. A goal. Here it is again. Paddy Kerwin. Ball bobbling her out in front of the goal. Pulled on and not even struck fully. This is Damian Martin taking the puck out. It could be the last puck out of the game. It's 3.15 to 112. John Crowley. Pat Hartnett. The last hurrah for the Cork men as Pat sends it over from 65 metres from his own end line. If they don't get off the field down there, the referee might decide to call the whole thing off. And what a turnabout that would be if the score, three goals, and, uh, three goals and 16 points to one goal and 12. Referee has blown the whistle and Cork are all Ireland champions for 1984 centenary year. And... The score was Cork, three goals and 16 points. Awfully, one goal and 12. And there he is, proud as could be, and rightly so. They've broken back. So is it to be the year of the Royals or the year of the Rebels? The expectation of an engaging final. And whether you're sharing the occasion with us in California or Canada, London, Liverpool or Limerick or indeed anywhere and everywhere, we hope you enjoy what's surely one of Irish sports' great annual occasions. A quick check on the watch by referee Paddy Russell.
It's Cork from left to right in the first half. And straight away, Danny Cullity trying to set up Paul McGrath. Transferred, intended for Teddy McCarthy, booted away by Jerry McEntee. The foul is recorded. Breaks down into the arms of Danny Cullity once again, his second possession in the match, into Shea Fahey. Going for a score himself, and he's put it over the bar, booted away brilliantly by Robbie O'Malley to PJ Gilly, trying to get the three-man full forward line going. This is Stafford. Colm O'Rourke is calling for it, Brian Stafford going it alone, and that is a brilliant piece of finishing. Martin O'Connell, a superb catch. Down towards Bernard Flynn. Against Tony Nation, trying to sell some dummies, on the left boot, high, and it's over the bar, and the sides are level. They Barry, towards Colm O'Neill, judging the hop well. Mick McCarthy calling for the way at the far corner. Column going on a solo effort. Linking up with Larry Tompkins, brilliantly brought down by Kevin Foley, sticking to his task like a leech, brilliantly done. This is McCarthy again. In the follow-up, he's put it over the bar, he's got two points. And it goes to Paul McGrath against Terry Ferguson. Support inside for Paul McGrath. He can get the ball in. Meads funneling back well, however. Paul just considering his options. And one would have considered that a pass in a little bit earlier might have yielded something for Cork. This is Danny Cullity trying to make the most of it. Shea Fahey. Meads trying to cover their men. And Fahey has driven it over with great confidence. There's a point between the teams at half-time. Paddy Russell calling for the end of the 35 minutes. The Cork fans and Dave Barry there, just uh, having a little chat with Paddy Russell. He sent off Colm O'Neill inside the last five minutes of the first half, and it's Cork, led by Larry Tompkins, who lead at half-time by six points to five. Two-man attack for Cork, who are down to 14 men of the second half. Fahey straight away, fouled by Hayes. So many fouls in this match. Terry Ferguson, he's done well in the game. Against Paul McGrath, he's kept McGrath scoreless so far. Touched down by Mick Lyons, but only as far as Paul McGrath, right across the face of the goal. Martin O'Connell with the clearance. But straight back out into the arms of a cork man again, this time it's Shea Fahey. Defiantly driven it back in, and he's put it over the bar. He's got three points in the match. Shea Fahey, outstanding so far, into Dave Barry. Mick Slocum here. Teddy coming a little bit too near to it. Paul McGrath offers a bit of variation. The option was well chosen. Outside towards Colin Coyle. The Meads fans will wonder why he wasn't in from the beginning. Touched forward to David Beggy, the player we mentioned just a moment ago. And as if to justify that last statement, he's put the ball over the bar. Tompkins, the free taker. Into Shea Fahey. And what's a very dark afternoon, really, here in Croke Park. The picture you're seeing is a good deal brighter, and it's looking particularly bright for Cork right now as Shea Fahey kicks his fourth point of the match. Four, four to three and a half minutes left. Stafford has cut it back to a two-point game. Are the 14 men to prevail in front of their loyal band of fans? The subs wait. The double has been achieved. It's Cork's All Ireland. It's Cork's year. The double in hurling and the double in football. In 1890, it was two club sides, but now a county selection has achieved this remarkable feat. Cork's first victory in the All-Ireland over Meath and the county's sixth victory in all. The crowning moment in a year of brilliant memories as the Munster and League champions Cork complete the clean sweep.